Hey y'all, hey, this is a highly requested video and it's on the way. So stay tuned, take a seat. We're about to get started. So as you can see from the title, this is going to be a nail filing and application video. This is a video that's highly requested. So let's get right into it. Right now you see me seasoning my nail file. When you're seasoning your nail file, you're taking one file and you're filing off those rough edges from off of that file that you're going to be using. I do recommend you season all your nail files because if you don't, you're at putting yourself at a risk of cutting yourself or cutting your clients, whichever one you're using this nail file on. Now, when I start by filing, I only do a light filing when it comes to filing the, and shaping the nail tip. The reason why I do that is because I'm going to have to file again anyway after I apply my acrylic. So I only use this time to do my outline for my acrylic, acrylic lay, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, Pre-shaping my nails, I only do a light filing. I do start my blending process. I go up under the nail. I start going up under the nail first, and then I do my blending at the top, and then I go on my sides, and then I hit off at the tip. So, again, I start up under. I go to the top to start my blending process. I hit my sides. And I hit the tip. I hope that doesn't sound too weird. Um, but that's the way that I do it. That's how. That's the best way I can explain it. So it won't sound too weird. My, my son said it sounded a little bit on the nasty side. A little bit explicit. The way I was explaining it. But yeah, that's how I do it. Um, I, right now, I'm showing you that I'm on, when I'm doing my blending, I'm only hitting that nail tip that false nail tip i'm not blending the actual nail bed i'm only blending that false nail tip the reason why is because this is an 8080 nail file this will cause some damage to the natural nail bed so you don't want to hit that natural nail bed you only want to hit the plastic end of that nail tip to start your blending process so yeah, that's the best way I can explain how I do my filing. Um, I'm going to show you again on this hand. I go up under the nail file on each side to hit those side walls to bring it in a little bit. And I always make sure I try to count the same amount of the, at the t on each side. So if I'm doing 10 on the right, I'm going to do 10 on the left. Um... Again, you only want to hit it do, to make it as even as possible. You want to hit them on each side. If you do 10 on the right, do 10 on the left. And on top of that, make sure you're only blending the nail tip. Blending is an option, you guys. You do not necessarily have to blend your nails. But because I started off on my journey blending my nails, so... I just continue on to do that. Um, I it, It's an old school thing. Most people don't blend, but for me, I like to blend, so I'm going to blend until I can't blend no more. Um, but yeah, that's the only way I can explain that part when it comes to blending the nail tip. And then I also use my sanding band to help with the blending process a little bit more. But I don't use it on a high speed. I only use it like at 3,000 RPMs. The lowest, one of the lowest. So the time when I do my nail, my clients, I always ask them to look at the shape. Is this the shape that you want? You want to be able to give them what they want, but also make sure that you're giving them a good, crisp, nice shape. So pre-shaping your nails in the beginning is important, but you don't have to go in and just do so much pre-shaping because you're going to have to do a lot of filing in the end anyway um the job is to work smarter not harder so always you guys just remember that you it's important to pre-shape your nails but don't just take so much time with pre-shaping because if you do a good 
pre-shaping in the, in the beginning, you know, a nice light pre-shaping. And on top of that, if you have your nail tips that's already pre-shaping, that will cut off a lot of time too. So it's also important to get some pre-shaping nails. It was, it's a lifesaver. It will save you a lot of time. Um, if you have, if you don't get, um, Nail tips that's pre-shaping. I think I want to do a video on non-pre-shaping nail tips. So that way we can learn how to do shaping too. So, but anyway, um, if you don't get pre-shaping nail tips, that will take up a lot of your time because you're going to have to shape that nail tip into whatever you want it to be. If, if it's coffin, um, coffin, stiletto, or uh, taper square, you're going to have to shape that nail. But if you have pre-shaping tips, that will cut out a lot of time. The acrylic that I'm using today is from Dynamic Nail Supply. It's the Bad Enough. It's an amazing dupe to the Bad and Bougie from Valentino. I do recommend this for beginners, especially for those who are beginners. I recommend this for people who's either intermediate or advanced when it comes to nails. This acrylic, one, is affordable, and two, is it's just amazing. The lay, the, um, lay on this acrylic is amazing. I, I definitely give this a 10 out of 10 all the time. Now, when I'm a applying my acrylic, I always lay that first bead between where the nail plate ends and the tip of the artificial tip begins to start my apex. Now, if you don't necessarily need to start an apex if your nail beds are the nails are shorter, but because these are medium to long nails, I do want to have a nice decent apex. So I always apply that first nail that first layer of acrylic, I'm sorry, not nail, the first layer of acrylic right there where the nail plate ends and the tip begins. Um, when it comes to making sure you're keeping your shape, it's always important to make sure you're cleaning off those sidewalls and looking at that nail from side to side, from left to right, looking at that nail. I don't care how many beads you lay down. I'm not very ticky on the 1B, 2B, 3B, or 4 or 5B method is how many beads you need to achieve the look that you're going for. That's what I base my lays of beads on. Um, but if I the first bead that I lay down, I always clean off the sidewalls. The second bead I lay down, I make sure I go back and I clean off the sidewalls. The third bead or fourth bead, I'm making sure I'm cleaning off the sidewalls. So... I had a subscriber who asked, um, how do I keep my shape throughout the process? Because she was having a little bit of difficulty um, keeping her shape. Um, her nails will be a little bit on the wider side. That is how I do it. I'm always, when I lay a bead down, I'm cleaning off sidewalls. You, ha you got to hit them sidewalls. You have to hit those sidewalls in order to keep your shape throughout the whole entire process. So as you see, I just laid my first bead on this nail and I am cleaning the tip off right now, but I will go back. I'm cleaning off the sidewalls. I'm using the body of my brush to keep those sidewalls intact and keep my shape. Remember when you're doing your tips, in the beginning, when you're shaping, that's your outline. So you want to keep your outline and your acrylic lay in the same in the same pattern. So always make sure that you're cleaning off your sidewalls throughout the whole entire process. You lay a bead, clean the sidewalls. You lay a bead, clean the sidewalls. That's the best way I can get it through to you. I'm more of a visual and hands-on learner. So I'm trying to explain it the way that I see it and the way that I do it, if that makes sense. Um, I know that a lot of people are visual hands-on learners. So I'm trying to explain it in that type of way. Just making sure you're cleaning those sidewalls, no matter how many beads you're laying down, clean those sidewalls to keep your shape. And on top of that, if you can see a place that needs to be filled in, 
Feel that place in. Don't be scared because, oh, I'm only doing the 2B method. Don't get hung up on that. Just feel that area in and making sure you're cleaning off those sidewalls. No matter what, clean those sidewalls. Um, Because of her nails being as long as they're going to be, make sure that you're using gravity as well. I mean, even if you're not, if they're short, make sure gravity is your friend throughout this process as well. So, Tilt that finger down, look at it, wipe, swipe down, build, clean those sidewalls. That's that's how I do it. I only make sure that I'm cleaning those sidewalls. I use gravity as my best friend. And on top of that, another important thing I just forgot, but it came to mind, is your monomer and your acrylic powder ratio. Um, not all the time that I get that right. I don't always get it right, but it always comes, it comes out good in the end. So I'm still practicing the monomer to powder ratio. I will do a video on that too, but mainly it is cleaning those sidewalls and looking at that nail from left to right for me that works so good and keeping my outline. <music>
how my nails look after I have done my application. Um, you can see that I have built a pretty good apex on my nails and the application is good. Like I'm really, really pleased with myself and how I did my application. I always have to show off my thumb. I feel like thumbs just do not get as much respect as all the other fingers because it's over there cocked to the side. So yeah, I always make sure that I show off my thumbs and give them their much due respect. Um, right now, after I do all of that, I'm going to be pushing back the cuticle, put not cuticle, but pushing back the sidewalls of each finger to release it from any product that has been caught up on up on the um, sidewalls. It does happen. A lot of people say, "Oh, make sure you don't put any have any product on the." Um, sidewalls but it happens all the time i don't know if it's just me or it happens to a lot of other people but it does happen you just don't want a lot of product on your neck the actual skin of the client or your your nails um i do the same method that i do when i do my pre-shaping i always go up under the nail and then I go on top of the nail to start my filing process. I hit those sides. I make sure I hit those sides evenly on each side, left and right. If I'm doing 10 on one side, I'm doing 10 on the other. Please make sure you do not do any over filing. I know it's hard not to do that, but please make sure you do not over file your nails. And also make sure you're using your pinky as an anchor um, when you're doing your filing. Because your pinky is usually going to make sure you have that, that support of your hand. And to keep yourself from getting any type of copper tunnel. So please make sure you're using your pinky as your support system throughout this process as well.
styling, I use my 5-in-1 carbine bit just to go in and do my um, sealing of the cuticle area. I do that for all of my nails. And then after I do the 5-in-1, I use my sanding band to smooth out any rough spots, any areas that I may see. I also use that my sanding band to smooth down the sides just in case. Please make sure throughout the whole entire process, you guys, y'all are looking at that nail from left to right, just in case you might be missing a spot or area that needs to be filled in or sealed in. You're looking at that nail from left to right. You also can use your five-in-one carbine bit to help with any type of shaping. A lot, a lot of nail techs do do that. I don't per se do that, but if it ever happens and I need to, I think I will. But yeah, using that 5-in-1 carbine bit to seal in the cuticle area is a must. Yeah, but this is the way that I do my filing and my shaping and my application throughout the whole entire process. I hope this was helpful for someone who is having trouble with doing their filing and their shaping. Um, if there is anyone out there who needs a little bit more detail, a bit more explaining, please do not be afraid to drop a comment down in the comment box and I will help you as much as possible. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I want to thank you guys for watching all the way into the end. If you made it this far, um, Remember that I will be doing a giveaway once I hit 500 subscribers. Practice does not make for perfection, you guys. It does make for progress. I know I say this at the end of each and every video because I want you guys to understand that this journey is not going to be easy. But if you have the heart, the willpower, and the the motivation to push through it, you will get through this and it will become the best thing you have ever chosen in life to do. No matter what, if it's nails or it's not nails, whether it, whatever it is in life, if you just push through it, you guys, you will be so surprised at yourself. I want to thank you guys for tuning in once again. I'll talk to y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye. Thank you.